Well, hello everybody, and welcome back to Chief Bears Off Grid Way, the homestead in the desert. And I'm going to sneeze here, I think. Maybe. Maybe not. Anyway, I'm here in the battery room because today we're going to talk batteries. Alright, now I'm going on my sixth year here in April with the, uh, the homestead, but I bought these batteries a year and a half before that, before I moved out here. And I started experimenting with them. So I had them set up in my backyard when I lived in Orange County. And I had solar panels, uh, three solar panels set up, 300 watts. That was uh, charging them during the day. And I was just checking them out. Now... Um, that's what I decided I was going to go with the 12 volt system instead of 24, 36, or 48. Because I, my thoughts were at the time, if for any reason there was a major problem and I needed to get my batteries charged, I could pull my van up close to the door here, run a set of jumper cables from the, the van battery into the battery bank here because whether you know it or not, all these batteries together still equal only a 12 volt system. I have two 6 volt batteries each tied together in series. That means positive to negative. And that, it, those two together make a 12 volt battery. Now these are 232 amp hours each, but yet when you tie them in series, you don't increase the amps on them. You only increase the voltage okay so I tied these in series here with this one small wire from positive to negative and then that leaves me a positive and a negative and those are those are in parallel as you can see the wires run parallel to each other down the side so the uh, running them in parallel you add the amps not the voltage when you run them in series, you add the voltage, not the amps. So, this is 232 amp hour, this is 232 amp hour. This is 6 volt, this is 6 volt. Tied in series, this is one 12 volt battery with the two of them together. But I, don't, I didn't go up from 232 to 464 because the amps will stay the same when I hook them in series. So these two, two together still only equal 232 amps. So I've got 18 of them, and that means 9 times 232 amp hours is what this part of the battery bank is worth. Okay, now these are like 370 amp hours each, and there's six of them, but it's actually 312 volts because you can see the S shaped wire goes positive to negative. On three of them, so that's uh, one 12 volt, two 12 volt, three 12 volts. Uh, they are still in in parallel, running the the reds along the back, the black uh, red, blacks across the back, and the reds across the front. So this is still 12, part of a 12 volt battery bank, but this is uh, 370, 370, 370. So that's what uh, 1,040 or something like that. So that's that that's my total amp hours. Now, why are these batteries lasting so long for me? Well, this little thing right down here is boosting on the wall. You can't see it right now, but there's a little light on it, and the light is on. Uh, when it gets darker, you can see it. But you connect that to the positive and negatives of the uh, of your 12 volt battery bank, and it should be one. Um, and the last battery, like the positive on the last battery, negative on the first battery, uh, or vice versa, one, one or the other. And then that covers the whole set of batteries. And what that does is it keeps your batteries from sulfating when you're using lead-acid batteries. So that's been making these batteries last longer. So I'm going into six years, and a normally uh, flooded lead-acid batteries are good for like three years. So I've already doubled my life on these batteries, which I'm glad of. Now these are used batteries. Those were all bought brand new, except the red one. That's one that went bad on me, and I replaced it. I didn't replace it with a new one, because 
the other batteries are all old and in a battery bank just like batteries in your flashlight or anything like that you'll always read in the instructions don't mix new and old batteries the reason for that is the old weak batteries will draw the brand new batteries down to their level so it doesn't work the other way putting a um, a fully charged battery against a low battery does not charge the lower battery. The lower battery actually sucks the energy out of the higher battery. It becomes a load on the battery, and that's what you don't want. All right. So, I did have a problem one time where my refrigerator uh, went out because I was using a, an unclean sine wave inverter. And I've since that, then gone to the Ames inverter, which is a very nice inverter. This is only 4,000 watt. And if I could, I would love to have gone with a 6,000 watt at least, or even an 8,000. But uh, as I was saying, I did have a problem with my batteries. My battery bank was stone dead one time when I left for a few days and came back. And that was because my refrigerator had blown up the compressor and shorted the system out. And uh, that wasn't a good thing. And I thought to myself, oh, geez, now i got to replace... Uh, 18 batteries because I only had 18 batteries at the time I'm going to replace 18 batteries and they've gone up from $100 each to $160 each and I said oh that's going to be a big expense but just for the heck of it I heard about repairing batteries so I went and bought this little unit and I've been asked about this so I'm going to feature it today and show it I bought this at Harbor Freight Tools and this has a fully automatic microprocessor built into it. Okay, so it'll do wet, AGM, gel, and deep cycle. It will not do anything for your LiFePo 4s. Lithiums are not included in this. But for the other, other ones that you have, yes, you can um, charge and repair these. Now, see this little button right here on the front of the unit? It's got a wrench there, and that says recondition. So when you first take this unit out of the box and you go over to your battery, now I've got it over here on the table, so we'll go over there. Be easier to explain than with a picture. I just wanted to show you the box so you know what to get when you went to Harbor Freight Tools. Okay, so this is the unit. And just like everything else in solar, you always hook up the battery first. So... Here's the positive and negative battery clamps. So you're going to put those on the proper poles of the battery you want to charge or fix. Now, remember, if the battery is completely stone dead, I mean, there is absolutely no power in the battery. If it's even below 9 volts, then you cannot use this unit. The microprocessor will not recognize the battery because the voltage is too low so what you might do is first put it on a 15 amp uh, quick charge and try to bring that voltage up in the in the battery and then you'd have to uh, disconnect everything and start over but this time hit recondition and if it's got 10 10 and a half volts in it it should work to recondition i've done that and i actually got a battery reconditioned out of it all right, so next, you cannot have a load on the battery while you're repairing it. You have to disconnect the battery from whatever um, it is connected to. Even in your car, don't try to recondition the battery in your car while it's hooked up because there's a load on it. The clocks, the computer chips, all of that stuff are all drawing on that battery, and that's a load. You don't want that... Ha that any load at all on the system when you're trying to recondition it now i was told by somebody just recently on my channel they put it in the um comment section you can't fix an agm battery and i was pointing to the yellow top that i had over here that andy had given me that uh, uh he said wouldn't hold the charge well i put it on re the recondition or the repair unit on this and I let it sit overnight. When I got up in the morning, I went out and the screen was blank. 
So I disconnected everything, reconnected it back up again, and it come back saying battery is 100%. And I let the battery sit there for the whole day, and then I came back again, and I connected it all up again and checked it, battery 100%. So it did repair the battery. So let's go over this. First thing, you make sure your battery is not on the load. Next, connect the battery first. So you're going to put your battery cables on the battery. Then you're going to plug it into a 120 volt outlet. Okay. And immediately, the built in automatic micro uh, processor that's inside of this will tell you which battery you have. It'll tell you if you're connected to a standard, an AGM, a gel battery, or whatever. It'll, t it'll tell you right off the bat what battery you're connected to. This thing knows. All right. And then it'll start with the, the two amp charge automatically. So at that point, if you want to repair the battery, hit the recon recondition button. If you just want to charge the battery, choose the amps you want to charge, 2, 8, or 15 amp. And 15 amp is a boost jump, so you could start your car engine if you had to. You don't have to have the battery disconnected from the car when you're just doing a, a charge. It's always best to disconnect one of the cables, like the, the ground cable anyway, when you're putting a long-term slow charge on it, whether a 2 amp trickle or an 8 amp quick charge. You want to no load on your battery when you're doing charge or repair to it. It's best that way. All right. So we'll have the we'd have this thing and we hit it on recondition. It automatically goes to battery in repair, and it, it just keeps on saying battery in repair until it's done. Now, if you do the amps charge. You hit uh, whatever amps you want by clicking through the switch and then hit charge and it'll start charging. You'll hear the fan come on inside the unit and it'll start charging the battery at whatever amperage you, you chose. Winter mode is a slow trickle charge. So if you're going to have something sitting in the garage for a long period of time and not going to drive it all winter long, you want to connect this thing up and hit winter mode and it'll maintain your battery through the whole winter it'll turn on and off as needed so it's a really neat little unit and it's a computer that's basically what it is it's a computer and it knows its batteries it really does so <clears throat> that's the idea and um, i've used that to repair quite a few batteries now i repaired that whole battery bank in there with that um, unit and I didn't have to do separate batteries I just had to disconnect those from the load which was basically connected to the inverter just disconnect the, the lines from till I go to the inverter and leave them open so there's no um, nothing running on the batteries at all and then I put that thing on um, recondition and I let it sit and it took two days and it came back and says uh, batteries, I think it said 94%. It didn't get them all the way back to 100, but it got them up to 94%, which was good for me. So anyway, here's the um, the SKU number, 56796, Harbor Freight Tools, the Viking, 2815, with the recondition button on it. That's the unit. So it'll handle all your regular battery needs uh, your AGMs and your gels and your deep cycles and of course that yellow top is a, a AGM deep, deep cycle it's both of those so it repaired that one without a problem it'll do a good job for you I recommend it I think it's a great little unit I've gotten a lot of good use out of this thing and uh, it it's uh, saved me a lot of money I don't remember what I paid for it, so I'm not going to uh, venture to try to tell you how much it costs. You can just call up, give them that number, and uh, they'll look it up and tell you. Or you can look at the SKU right here. And uh, the 56796 is the same as this number up here. All right. So that's the SKU on it. 
good luck for you, anybody who's going to get one of those and try them out. I love mine. I wouldn't trade it for the for the world. By the way, today was a beautiful day. 70 degrees. The weather people lied again. Today it wasn't even supposed to get much over 50. And it's supposed to, at 3 o'clock, the winds were supposed to come back with a vengeance. And there's no wind out here. I'm still walking around in shorts and a t-shirt. I do have shoes on because I went to town, had my eyes checked, got a new prescription. Well, actually, my eyes are the same as they were um, three years ago. And uh, I'm getting another pair of brand new glasses that uh, won't have any scratches on the lens. Because for some reason, this stuff on the ground out here, it scratches your glasses when, it, when they land in that. I can't understand that. I don't understand. Why does it do that? Oh, man. Well, anyway, that's the story, and I'm sticking to it. Thanks for joining me, everybody. Don't forget, comments and questions below. Don't forget the thumbs-ups down there. Click on that thumbs-up. Like my videos, please. Don't forget to subscribe and share. Subscriptions, like I to keep on telling you, subscriptions are absolutely free. There's no charge. There's no harassment. There's no bunch of um, emails coming to you or anything like that. Your subscription, when you click on subscribe down below, all that does is help me. It gives me another subscriber on my list. And the more subscribers I get, the more products I'll get from sponsors that I can test and give away and things like that. All right, everybody. Thanks again. This is G-Bear signing off.